Hello and welcome to the podcast. Uh, with me today is Ann Steiner and Brian Milovac from the Shavlik team. I'm Steve Morton and today we're going to talk about uh, add-ons to Microsoft System Center Configuration Manager, SCCM. And first of all, welcome folks to the podcast. Hey, let's, uh, let's talk for a little bit about SCCM. Certainly uh, one of the uh, most prevalent uh, technologies for systems management in the world. Um, you know, t tell us a little bit about SCCM itself. Well, many IT shops are adopting SCCM. It's, it's uh, one of the major players in systems management. There's um, almost 70 million seats of SCCM deployed, and uh, between 50 and 60 percent of organizations currently are using, you know, part of SCCM or all of it. And, and pretty good technology. And I've been around for a long time, uh, you know, uh, and and uh, and again, especially for Windows-centric uh, shops, uh, it is uh, it is uh, pretty predominant. Uh, for sure, you know, a very solid technology, works well with the Windows platform, and also a, a lot of companies, you know, go that direction because of its inclusion in their enterprise agreements. So tell us about the add-on strategy for SCCM. So again, uh, you know, Microsoft is, uh, does what they do very well, but tell us what, um, what people might uh, not get in SCCM where they want to add on additional functionality. That's right, Steve. Microsoft does what they do very well, but there are some gaps in the capabilities that SCCM has, and, and some of those gaps really represent things that probably are never a business that Microsoft would want to get into. Uh, take, for example, things uh, that we like to call the treadmills, like patch or compliance or software asset management, and some other places where SCCM is challenged is working with non-Windows devices, such as mm -hmm. Linux machines, uh, managing Macs, managing mobile devices. And lastly, it can be hard to use SCCM to, to manage remote offices uh, and geographically distributed uh, infrastructures. And what are, the, what are the folks doing that are using SCCM today to fill those gaps? Uh, uh, Third-party solutions, or are they just ignoring it? What, what are they doing to fill those gaps? You know, it depends a little bit on the gap and a little bit on the company. Oftentimes, they really aren't able to fill those gaps. They're struggling through the challenge or Take, for example, third-party application patching. In a lot of cases, companies just aren't doing it. In other cases, yes, they are introducing third-party add-ins to help to plug those holes and make their lives easier. Yeah, now we've done a number of, I know, surveys with the SCCM customer base and certainly uh, watch uh, web traffic and things like that. Are, are there common themes for for add-ons that actually make them work? Is there, are there common ways that people would uh, make this successful? and we asked SCCM users what makes a great add-in and they all just uniformly said one thing, integration. It's critical that the add-in software be integrated with the database of SCCM. It's critical that it be integrated with the presentation layer. SCCM admins, they would like to do their work in SCCM. Yeah, so again, it's native-like uh, native, uh, native -like, uh, integration. Uh, don't want to have to have them leave the console to do work, right? Uh, as tightly integrated as possible seems to be the, the common thread that we're hearing back from customers. So what, what can we at Shavlik do to fill some of those gaps people have with SCCM? You know, one of the things that we can do is, of course, uh, in the software license management realm, you know, help these customers realize some cost savings, you know, be able to do uh, true asset lifecycle management with the SCCM product, uh, be able to do analytics with their data, and, of course, third-party patch management. Mm -hmm. T tell me a little bit more about the software license compliance standpoint. I thought that was one of the functionality and the features of, of SCCM today. Well, SCCM today gathers all that software, right? It, it goes out into the ad root programs and it pulls that whole list of software and, and it also then scans all the EXDs and, of course, the file headers associated with those. And it brings all that data back. And, of course, an admin has to be able to sift through that uh, based on their, their end user license agreements, based on maybe tweaks and bundles. Uh, and again, that's just not being done. It's a lot of work. It would take sometimes you know, months of man hours to do. And our products today, of course, will be able to analyze all that raw data individually per machine, use our cloud-based connectors to be able to pull in all the effective information right from the Microsoft IAM Licensing Service Center and other resellers. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a really hard thing for customers today with just 
you know, native SE can do to figure out their software license management. Yeah, interesting. It's it's easy enough to grab the EXEs and and even to look at things like application metering, but trying to normalize that data is just a huge task, right? And I think to Ann's point earlier, this is an area where Microsoft may not be great in the traditional kind of treadmill things where there's constant updates, there's constant normalization that has to happen. Uh, that's something that Shablik brings to the table. I'm, I'm going to talk a little minute about patch and I'll come back to more um, data analytics in just a minute, Brian, but uh, and tell us a little bit about what Shablik is doing to help SCCM customers uh, patch and specifically around third-party applications. our third-party patch product for Microsoft System Center called Shablet Patch. Uh, this, with this release, we have that fully integrated add-in that can plug right into the Configuration Manager console. Uh, from there, patching third-party applications becomes an automated process. It'll automatically download updates from Shablet when you open SCCM. You can publish for certain vendors or certain applications to WSUS, and from there that, that Microsoft infrastructure takes over and you patch third-party applications in the same manner in which you patch your Microsoft operating system. Yeah, no, no I thought SCCM had uh, some basic uh, third-party uh, patch uh, capabilities as well. Has that changed or are we filling some more of those gaps? If they do, but it, it's just a small set of applications there, Stephen. The Shablik catalog brings in hundreds of applications that you can patch, and also with the Shablik, uh, Shablik patch, you have the opportunity to really uh, do some customization, do some automation. You know, say maybe at your site you're interested in patching Adobe, you're interested in patching Java, you're interested in patching the web browsers. Well, you can configure it to cover all of those applications, all of the versions of those applications, and to do that automatically. Yeah, speaking of automatically, we kind of have this saying of just uh, add water and stir, right? The, uh, it's supposed to be super easy, again, super integrated, uh, as you called out, is one of the main values for any good uh, uh, add-in to SCCM. Uh, and uh, what's the reaction been in the market? I know that we released this just relatively recently. What are the customers telling us so far? Yeah, we've been hearing some positive feedback, you know, Assuming you have your FCCM system up and running, you can have Shadow Patch installed in about two minutes. You can have it configured in about three more minutes and be publishing third-party updates to WSUS within five minutes. Uh, we're hearing our customers are happy that it, you can automatically download the updates. They don't have to monitor Shablik or ma monitor vendors for those updates. And, and they're just loving having that UI and that work right there in FCCM. Yeah, good. All right, I'm going to bounce back over to the software license management. And Brian, you know, you've been doing this for a while. I'm guessing you're still surprised at the number of people that are overpaying for software licenses, right? That don't know what they have or where it is or whether they're using it, or nor what they're paying their vendors for maintenance. Is that uh, is that true? After all these years, you still are surprised by that? It is. It is, and it's more uh, uh, noticeable with all the audits that have been going on in the industry. Uh, Gartner, of course, is saying that most companies will over license by 60% because they, wow. of course, want to be compliant. Uh, so having something uh, like the management intelligence product to be able to figure out their true license stance, to be able to figure out compliance and do all those calculations for you, almost like what an accountant would do with, with your taxes at the end of the year, uh, has been a really quick ROI and has uh, really helped people know exactly what their, uh, their install base is and to be able to, of course, pass those vendor audits. And, and are third-party vendors willing to use the, the reports that we get out of data analytics to, to defend themselves? Are they accepted as reports that uh, other vendors will use for license true up? Well, and some of the vendors, right? So there's a, a particular report, for instance, that Adobe, um, you know, when they have their audits, that they had a certain format. So we, of course, ship with that format. Uh, Microsoft is actually a little bit more uh, complex. But again, at the end of the day, what most of these customers are doing is, is um, let's try to get in front of the audit and, and know our stance and know that we're compliant before an audit takes place. A lot of times these companies are then reactive, so they get audited. And then, of course, is when they go through and figure out their compliance. So um, at the end of the day, the format that Microsoft may use with some of these accounting firms uh, may be proprietary, but if they, of course, know their like, stance beforehand, it uh, doesn't matter what format they come out with, they're going to pass it. Right. Hey, t tell me a little bit more about the data analytics part of it. So, again, I get the software license compliance component of it, but what other kind of insights can you get with uh, using data analytics with uh, with SCCM? Sure. Well, the, the best way to explain it is, of course, you know, a simple management product, SCCM, uh, you know, all the ones out there, really. 
they all have used for the last 25 years an agent. And then that agent gets deployed and brings information back into the, the database, right? Well, a lot of the information you need to do true asset lifecycle management doesn't reside on those devices. So being able to tie that information, uh, for instance, with, with police data that they may have in-house to other databases, or using all of the, the cloud aggregators that we've created with all of our top uh, resellers like a CDW, SHI, or Insight, to be able to get in all the purchasing information. You know, again, things like warranty of the devices, that doesn't reside local uh, for an agent to find. So using our connectors with all of our manufacturers like Dell and HP and, and, and Lenovo and Apple, to pull all the information in as well, they can start getting a bigger picture. Another deficiency, of course, is the fact that uh, FGTM only really focuses on the desktop, laptop, and servers. So being able to, to use data analytics will allow them to discover uh, things such as the, the network-attached printers, routers, and scanners, and pull all these things into uh, the inventory tree. Yeah, powerful stuff. All right, where can, uh, but I'll ask Aaron first, where can uh, the people that are listening to this podcast get more information about the products? Where can they learn more about the details? And, and I guess even more importantly, where can they download the stuff? Uh, it's all on the Shavlik website, and that's at www.shavlik.com. Check out our products page for Shavlik Patch and for Management Intelligence. Uh, you see lots of information about what we've been talking about today, and also have the opportunity to download a free trial. Yeah, awesome. Well, thanks both for uh, joining me today, and uh, look forward to what's next coming out of Shavlik. Thank you.